ESPN TV today. I am very excited to be interviewing Declan Kavanaugh here in the group. I'm excited. Two reasons. One is Declan is a part of the Catapult program, my Catapult program, where we work with you to blow up a niche-based Facebook group so you can go and make the impact, the legacy you want to leave, and have a lot of people joining your movement every week. But Declan also has an amazing heart. And I've heard a little bit of his story, but I've never actually interviewed him yet. So Declan, welcome to the stage. Thank you, Amos. Thank you, Amos. Well, we're going to have a ch- we're, we're going to have a chat today and I'm going to ask Declan some questions and pull his story out of him so that those of you that want to know who he is and also I'm going to link his group the um Coming Home to You network I'm going to link that in this post so if you want to connect with Declan click on his profile or if you want to check out his Facebook group the Coming Home to You network network B which just launched be sure to click on that uh, Declan you're like a couple weeks in maybe or something like that so Declan how do you introduce yourself It, it, a lot a lot would depend on who I'm speaking with and where it is. Because I'm such a, I would say, a varied. I, I, I find that I have lived a lot in the short few years that I've been. And, and what I mean by that, when I was 16, um, my family life wasn't, wasn't great. It was a bit toxic there with my parents, always continuous arguments. So I went away to sea. I worked on cargo ships. And I traveled all around the world on cargo ships uh, before I was before I was 19. Every ocean, every sea, north, south, up and down. And I experienced a lot. I saw a lot. But not only that, I knew that at that time there was a recession in Ireland. And, you know, everybody was being pushed into a little a little corner. You need to get into a box. And this is this is the way it was. I'd been all around the world and I said, oh, no, that's there's there's plenty of choices out there, plenty of opportunities. So after a while I I, I came back and the company went bust. So I I, I, I said, no, what am I gonna do? I went over to London, started retraining for a chef or ended up working in building sites and hotels and doing all sorts of hitter and titter. Uh I went back to Ireland when I was 20 and started to study to be a chef. While I was studying, I got an illness that the doctors couldn't figure out what it was, what the story was. I went in, say, on a Monday. By Tuesday, I was in a coma. Even now, speaking about it, I can I can still remember it. I can I can feel it. I can. It's quite emotional. I was in a coma for. The timeline is, is not too clear. I was probably maybe a week, maybe a little bit over a week. Long story short, I was in hospital for six months, seven months. Became a paraplegic because I wasn't moving. So all I could move was my head. I completely depended on other people to, to feed me, to clean me, all the rest of it. So a great learning experience when you can't do anything for yourself. All you can do is lie there. A lot of the time, watch your food going cold in front of you, being hungry and being able to eat it. That's very frustrating. <laughs> that's, a, that's a humdinger. But while I was there, a lot of interesting things happened to me. Now, I always had a strong connection with spirit and always felt things and picked up on different energy centers around the place. I remember in, in the Isle of Man, going into the witches' den and feeling the energies that were there and scaring the, the Jesus out of myself. I ran away in hidden caves for for the for the rest of the day. Um, but while I was in the hospital, I I I experienced past lives. I think it was probably about six or seven past lives altogether, and it was always at the time of passing over. But there was such a sense of peace and contentment at that time that even though I was in critically ill station. I felt within me that contentment, that peace. And I was the only person that ever come out of a death ward that wasn't dead, that was alive. And it was, it, it's kind of hard because it was so, words can't do it justice. As I was lying in my bed looking up, because that's all I, all, all, where all I could look, I had this picture of 
angels, cowboy hats and cowboy boots. And they convey a message that all is good. You're not going to die. You're going to get out of this. And true enough, I did. Uh, my parents were told to prepare for the worst. That if if I got out, I might not be, I might be a paraplegic, I might be a vegetable. I was neither. Six months later, I was trucking across Europe with these experiences that I had while I was in hospital. One, knowing that I was more than just this physical body that was walking around, that I had experienced a lot of different things. I experienced a lot of different realities. I saw people differently. There was a lot of humans or people in human form that were in the hospital that appeared to me differently, appeared to me like lizards, like fish people, um, with, with animal characteristics. So I had all of this going on, but I had no way of dealing with it or asking me. I remember talking to the priest because I was in the death ward. The priest was around every day and he'd be asking me. And I'd be telling him about these things. And I'm so, oh, he, this guy thought I was I was being being possessed by something, and he was trying, what did he do? An exodus and all sorts of weird stuff, you know. But I I knew then too that while he was a priest, he wasn't really coming. He was coming from the book rather than coming from the heart, because I had experienced. He said, "You can't experience God. You have to go through me to experience God." And I said, I'm "Sorry, I've already experienced God." I don't need to have that. So it, I, I began to question what it was we were told and what it was. Our belief systems and, and realizing that we've all been programmed to think a certain way, to operate a certain way, and don't ask questions. If I'm the priest, I know better than you. Don't be asking me now. And the same with the doctors. They all have this attitude that they know best. And... Even while I was coming out in recovery stage in hospital, there was this voice going on within me that was telling me, food is going to be your medicine. Food is what's going to get you out of it. Now, at that time, thinking food, the French food, classical French food was considered the best food at that time. So, hey, I'm going to have some of that stuff. And, you know, I shortly realized then, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily they had the reputation for being the best food. But food in the deeper sense is that everything that we put into our body today is what's walking around tomorrow. We're surrounded by herbs and, and what we so-called weeds that are of benefit to us. And they're, they're just there out in the garden. I, I can see half a dozen of them here. And we have these fruits and berries and all these different types of... Or the belief... Or, or the understanding that was coming to me was that we are part of nature, nature's part of us. We're all interconnected here and that we're all one. And that when we can come from nature, with nature, we can be better and we can be, we can heal ourselves. For everything that causes us illness is also, the cure is also already there. So everything is there in the garden, already in the nature. We just have to align with that. We just have to, to get on the same frequency. So at that time, I didn't know much. So I started reading books on different diets, on different types of food. And because I was trained to a chef, I finished my training. And I was off then working in Switzerland and, and England and became um, the chef on cruise ships. And everywhere I went, I met some very interesting people. In South America, I came across these shamans and shapeshifters. That's the only way I can describe them for, for the experiences that I had with them. I, and I wonder, was it the drink that I have to, did I have that extra drink now that was, 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 was causing hallucin hallucinogens in my head? And it's like, for they opened up a whole new world again. Now, already in Mexico and places like that, you know, they have... It's in Chichen Itza, and they have a lot of wonderful magic places down there in the pyramids. And I know several other people that had worked on the ships that were talking to that had experienced something different, the pyramids. 
weren't able to put a name on it or or what it was, but just that there was something there. So this awareness and the fact that I was able to pick up on energies anyway, that when I was visiting the pyramid, it's as though I was traveling back in time and opening up my consciousness to what had been there. For in nature, everything that happens, it leaves residue, this remembrance of it everywhere. And that we can actually connect into this remembrance and, and to go back. So I had all of this funny shit going on and all this weird stuff, and I wasn't really able to. I, I didn't pay, I paid attention, but maybe not too much of attention to it because it was, you couldn't turn around and tell the fellow beside you, you know, guess what happened to me today? You know, I saw these spirits and I saw these things work. And I was like, yeah, right. You know, they're 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 gonna get you ready for the for the the, the straight jacket. So a lot of the experiences that I had, I kind of kept to myself. But all of the time too, I was meeting other people that were validating and I was experiencing different things. So that just set me off on on what why am I here? Because I'm experiencing these things and not everybody's experiencing them, I want to know more. So I became a hunger for books. I just read and read and read and read and as much as possible. And and now we're, we're fortunate enough that we have technology with YouTube and all the rest of it that there's a ton of information out there, sometimes too much, and it's hard to to sift through it and to see what's right and what's wrong. But to cut everything short, I realized that while there's loads of things out there and why there's a lot of different realities going on at the same time as what we have now, because we are in this body, because I am in this body at this particular time in this country, this is my experience now this time while i might be able to have the the tools to access a, a different reality this is the one that i have to deal with this is this is where my lessons are now and this is where my life is so that understanding was was tremendous because then it, it, it kind of takes the pressure off a little bit because you know okay it's granted yes there is a lot more stuff going on and i'm aware of it but this is where i am now and if if i can draw on something which is useful to help me to get through this life all the good but if it's a distraction it's like turning on the television and sitting in front of the television and it's just distraction after distraction but really you want to just quiet yourself get in touch with nature and get out and just say experience what you have now for oh. this is where we are oh. so it's it's the realization that, and of course, from that now, when I came back from Mexico, Mexico was a great experience, brilliant. But it came, the restaurant became a very expensive hobby. So I ended up leaving, I think, with $50 in my pocket. Were you and owning them, starting them, franchise? What were you doing down there? I, I, yeah. <laughs> if I, how it started was that myself, my wife at the time, we had luggage in Costa Rica in florida in los angeles and in mexico did you say luggage yes luggage <laughs> so it was flight at that time where it was expensive so i said hey let's buy a car and travel around so we get to experience travel from a to b have a hell of a time and pick up all the luggage so i, I bought myself a jeep cherokee in los angeles and headed off from los angeles and the, the idea was to, to travel around and to pick up all the luggage. And and so I did. And I got as far as Mexico. I got as far as, as Guadalajara. I think we were seven days driving at this stage. And I was covering 900 odd miles a day or kilometers, maybe. It was a lot of driving. And it was a lot of, I won't say it was, it was interesting, but I kind of like I wanted to get to A as quickly as possible. And my my destination at the time was Puerto Vallarta. So I just made a beeline for Puerto Vallarta. But when I reached um, 
Guadalajara, I realized, yeah, I'm tired. I, I'm kind of tiring now. While I was driving, I, I noticed that my eyes were wavering and I nearly went off the road several times. So as soon as we got to Puerto Vallarta, I said, that's it. Couldn't hang it up the keys and I'm just chilling for a while. And after probably about six months, um, I was looking at my wife and she was looking at me and I said, well, one of us better maybe go out and get a job. Maybe it might be a good idea, you know. So I says, why don't you go out? You're, you seem to, she was a jeweler at the time and she had a lot to offer. And, and, and she says, no, 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 no. So, so Morgan's went off and I ended up opening a hotel down there with, um, God, I can't remember the name of the group. Um, but they started paying me from get go. They they sent me off to study Spanish, and I opened up a hotel and I worked a year with them and, and realized I didn't come all the way down here to be working twelve hours, fourteen hours a day for uh, for some crowd in the in in this heat. So I left, and I had the opportunity to buy a restaurant that was owned by a Canadian couple, and and it was it was an idea that I had. I'd always had this goal, if you like, to operate my own business, maybe on the beach, maybe like incorporating like a dive, um, a, a dive team and somewhere nice and relaxed out in nature, you know, without the turtle swimming by, maybe a shark or two. Oh, wow. Fun. With all of this, all of this, all of this type of stuff, you know. And so I said, I, I, I bought a restaurant, which was in the middle of the town. And um, it wasn't to my liking, so. I had a, a couple of um, partners, which in it, to have a business in Mexico, you need to have a Mexican partner. You can't do it by yourself. You have to have a Mexican. So I had a friend who was married to a Mexican. And he had a friend who was an accountant. So instead of just having one, now I've got two partners and uh, became a very expensive uh, adventure. But what we did was we built uh, on the roof, we built uh, an open bar area, half covered in, half outside with loads of plants, little waterfall. It was covered in shade, big barbecue pit. And what I had wanted to do was Texas style, have a salad bar and barbecue because lovely fish down there, lovely prawn tails, was to barbecue fish and prawns and steaks and, and that kind of thing. Everybody that was coming through the door was looking for fish and chips, steak pies, uh, English type fair. So it's it became my dreams, my wishes, my aspirations was bit by bit were being pissed on by other people and were being pulled asunder. Um I started hitting the drink, cigarettes and whatnot. And I went I became I was in a place which was very bad, wasn't healthy at all. But still having fun and still meeting wonderful people down there. Uh, but the realization too that this is not good. So consequently, the my wife at the time she went back off to sea working. I says, right, that's it. Well, that's that's that finished. And I ended up walking away from everything because I knew if I didn't, I'd I'd be I'd be leaving in a box. So I wasn't quite ready to for that to happen. For through everything, the remembrance of when I was in hospital. And the remembrance of these other things that was always there and they were always showing me and guiding me. So regardless of what I did, and I did some very stupid things, there was this little help there all of the time, nudging me and pushing me back the other way and getting me out of trouble or not getting me in as much trouble as I could have done. So I ended up coming back to Ireland and studying psychotherapy, Reiki, uh, massage, and going down the holistic route and reading as much as stuff and, and doing as many workshops on, on everything that was that was new that was coming on, whether it be crystals, uh, diet, colors, uh, different types of frequencies, learning as much as possible and, and, and being in awe about this and realizing too that there's kind of there's more. This quest or this thirst for always wanting more and this continual study. Even now, I'm still with SGLA. I'm still studying more about, about different types of healing modalities, different types of, of um, 
stuff that's going on in the world. But to know that knowledge is no good being stuck inside my head. All of these tools, all of these experiences that I have had are no good stuck in my head. I need to get them out there. I need to, whether we put it out in a book, talk about people. For I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who have experienced things or have been in situations where they thought, oh, that was that was kind of strange. And maybe they thought, or maybe they dismissed it and thinking, oh, I had, I had one, one drink too many. But to know that we are so much more. And when we live life, when we experience things, it's not just for our benefit. We are like the example. Somebody has once said it, you know, that we are mirrors to each other. That the words I say now here today might very well help somebody else down, down the line or they might help somebody who's listening now and say, yes, I resonate with that. I have had an experience which is similar to, to that. Uh, for I clearly believe I, I've, I've lived a, a whole lot of lifetimes way before way before I was 30. I, I pretty much experienced an awful lot of things. Um, but to know that there's a time and place for everything and that from having experiences, we need to pass them on. We need to share them with people. Hence, the group coming back to you. For it purely has been a, a, a discovery of one finding out who is Declan Kavanagh, who is in this body that's called Declan Kavanagh, what am I all about? And how can I help other people find out who they are and be discover within themselves their gifts and help draw that out and help them to be the best that they can be. Let's so talk about your thing. group. Let's talk about that. Uh into your group because you launched the group, the Coming Home to You Network, which I'll link above. So is it, it's an extension of you. Like, can you talk about why though? Like a bit more why, why you chose to do that because you're part of the Catapult program and you're starting this movement. I I, I think they, one, it's the timing. For a long time, I won't say I, I have bought into the end of the world but definitely, I know that there was been a movement on in this earth, in this planet, and that everything was changing in the year 2000. Science told us, all of the books talked about the year 2000, all these big changes that's going on. No, it didn't quite happen the way these books might have told us we were going to happen. But there's been a change in consciousness, a shift in consciousness, where there's a lot of people, most of the religions have been thrown out there have been dismissed, have been discarded. It, it, we, we find ourselves where there's no moral compass, where there's no or very little guidance, where there's no nothing to follow or no one to follow. And it's to know that we are have to be in our own gurus, that we have to sort of plow our own road. But still, at the same time, we still need guidance. We still need that little help, that little somebody to hold our hand and to help us to navigate where where they are at the time. So not that I'm I'm saying I'm 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 the captain of the ship, but I'm the captain of my ship. But I can also lead the way for other people and to help other people open up to their possibility and, and to to help them see what's going on. For this awakening it's there's a lot of confusion out there. People are, are know that there's something more, but not quite sure what that more is. Um, spirit, what does that mean? That God has become a dirty word. You know, so God, let's take the word God out and let's call him the prime creator. Call it the prime creator because it, it's it's not male or female, it's, it's both. So let's call it the prime creator has put us here for a reason to experience life, to 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 experience life. So let's view life that way, that life is an experiential project for us to experience. 
How many people have heard that or see life that way? I don't know. Most people have been conditioned that you have to be this way. You have to be working 40 hours a week. You have to struggle. You have to strive. And they might not be aware of that there's, there could be another way. So it's to, it's to, to be that light in the bushel. For I feel my journey can be the light for somebody else. And it's no good me hiding it under a bushel. It's no good me knowing these things, but keeping my mouth shut. It's no good me having I've had all these experiences and just what would have happened before on a Friday night down in the pub, the story might come out or two or three. Uh, but it's to be that example for, for other people, to help other people shine the way. And to help them know that, yes, you're not crazy. You're not mad. You're not. There is a lot of funny stuff going on out there, you know, and, and maybe by listening to some of my funny stuff or strange stuff going on, you know, that uh, it, it, it might be a little, little soothing syrup for yourself, for your soul. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And who are you, who's coming into your community, the Coming Home to Your Network? What kind of people are you attracting? Well, I mean, I, I'm attracting some, <clears throat> based on the interviews that I've done so far, some very wonderful people. And the common thread seems to be that there is an awareness of how to program your mind, how to differentiate between the program that you already have there and one that you can put in there yourself, you know, with the likes of Neville Goddard and, and uh, the great Bob Proctor and, and Tony Quinn and, and a lot of different people who, who have gone down this route. But also to know that a lot of people have found themselves in, they wake up and what's it all about? You know, their life has become, I wouldn't say meaningless, but they're they're definitely at that that crossroads that they've kind of have lost the sense of themselves and have been disconnected from themselves and from nature and, and really just need to have that little pushback and to say, yeah, it isn't. Whatever's gone is gone. But now, starting fresh, we can move forward and move forward in the way that's beneficial to you and that, that's that's better for you. So a lot of people are are struggling. A lot of people have have this heartbreak, and you can get caught up in heartbreak. You can get caught up in drama and 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 be on the merry-go-round. They just keep going around and around and around. But eventually, you got to say enough is enough, and to come back to your heart, to come back to you, and and bring peace and order into your life, and and meaning, and to know that yes. You are loved, for love is what keeps us together. Them songs, them corny songs that they used to say, that's a corny song. Yeah, there's truth there. There's truth there. You know, it came from somebody's heart, somebody's idea. Maybe the words they use may be, maybe not resonate with you. But life is about love. It is about sharing. It, it, it's about cooperation and collaboration. It's not all about me, 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 me. I want this. Give me, give me, give me, give me. What about what can I give? How can I how can I make this a better world? How can I make that a better place? You know, for then you start of thinking, well, what's my legacy? What do I leave by? Because I mean, we're here for a short period of time. And 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 then we move on. But our soul, our spirit moves on, goes on again and again. So-called challenges that we might feel that we're we're experiencing or so-called negative situations. If we turn that around and say, this is my challenge now, now all of a sudden it's got no negative connotations, but it's now it's something that I can work on, something that's not happening to me, but it's something that's happening and that I can overcome this situation. And to get the tools to do that, to experience that. There's a program that I've done called Thinking Into Results where you write down what it is you want and, and you write down your perfect life what would your perfect life look like to ask yourself that question who am i what am i where am i going 
and just to ask yourself those questions over and over again and see what happens. See what comes in. See how it hits you or where it's hitting you in the body. Or it's going to resonate there somewhere. It's going to set off something. And then to be able to look at your life and say, if everything was equal, if I was able to sit down now here and describe my life, what would it look like? Where would I be? Or where would I be living? What would I be doing? For we all have these natural gifts within us. And, and a lot of the time it's being painted over by society, by our parents, who only mean the best for us, but push us down an alleyway or a little place, or maybe where we didn't want to go. But now we have the opportunity to look at that, to, to uncover everything, to bring that out and say, okay, this is what I always wanted to do. I always wanted to climb that mountain. I always wanted to write a song or be a poet. Why not go for it? Start writing poetry. Start following what's inside here. Allow yourself to shine. For you deserve it. You owe it to yourself to be the best version of yourself. And therefore, allowing the rest of us to be the best version of ourselves. Wow. So in my own little way, oh. this is what... Yeah, I love it. Well, we're going to end it here, Declan. This has been amazing. ENTV today, if you have been listening, watching Declan Kavanaugh, me and if you him, this is who he is. It's his heart. If you resonate with that, connect with him. Check out his group, the Coming Home to You Network. Now you can see why I love working with De Declan. He's just uh, what a joy, what a heart. And just you can tell you're just on your purpose. So we're going to end the broadcast here, Declan. Thanks for being on today with me. This has been a real treat to be able to interview you and the group. And um, we'll keep chatting after we end the broadcast. Closing thoughts, Declan, to anyone watching? Follow your heart. Follow your dreams. Allow okay. yourself to dream. All right. There you go, Ian TV today. We'll be seeing you soon.